Hey guys, today I am going to answer the question of is Commander Legends a good product to buy? Now, first and foremost, uh, Commander itself is a very, very good and casual friendly product. Uh, the basis of Commander is that you can use uh, you know, 100 cards, but again, some of them will be land. And if you're a newer player, some of those land will be basic land. And it will create a very unique and experience that you can continue to play because it's singleton being that it's a single card you don't actually need to spend that much money so instead of having four tundras you need one tundra at most and of course there's a lot of substitute cards which are almost as good as but much cheaper uh, the reason that I think this product is going to be really fun is that the fact that you don't need that many ver you don't need four copies of every card. Like there's no reason outside of speculation. And then I will tell you speculation wise, there's no reason to invest in this, uh, you know, because they're just going to reprint it. Um, they have shown you that they're going to reprint everything into oblivion so why would you like hoard this type of thing maybe in sealed you want to buy some sealed boxes to hold and invest in i guess but in my opinion commander is a format which does drive the market but not in the way that you would expect um in standard the reason standard makes so much money for it Magic the Gathering is very basic. You need four copies of whatever the newest Chase Mythic is. So if, unless you're buying single, let's say, assume that you're opening boxes to get four copies of that Mythic Chase where a uh, Chase Mythic. I mean, how many boxes would you be opening? Let's if you're buying VIP packs and you're hoping to get a playset of foil extended art box topper. I don't know. Let's pick a mythic. What mythic would you want four of? But let's just say Stoneforge Mystic. It's a rare. And you might want four of them for your modern deck. Well, you would be opening a lot of product. Uh, that would be a lot of product that you would... Or maybe uh, four Jaces. Four Jace the Mind Sculptors. How much VIP... How many VIP packs would you need to open to get four of them? And that's why EDH is our force of wealth. Duh. I was like, wait a second. Isn't there something that's like really expensive in blue that people want uh, to get four of? Because you want them to be matching, right? Yes, you could buy the cheaper one. Yes, you could buy the single. But if you're a high roller, why would you do that? So this set is made for casual players. It's not unreasonably priced. It is priced higher than a normal booster box which is a little alarming, but at the same time, like, I get it. I mean, why not make more money for the same amount? Now, you do get five extra cards per pack, which is, I guess, good? I, I don't know. Uh, similar flavor-wise, mechanically, this set is not Modern Horizons. This isn't about putting Graft on a fast flashback card and doing weird mechanical mass ups nor is it about a substantially increased power level in that sense it is mechanically much closer to what you would find in a magic set oh i don't like that if you crack open your first pack like a normal draft but there's one big wrinkle to drafting here so if you get enough value, I, again, I don't know. This set is going to release November, late November. Will magic stores be back? Because draft, from a store owner's perspective, doesn't actually make you that all that much money. They're essentially buying a box, and then your employee's time that you pay them is more money than the profit for a box. You can play more than one copy of the card if you draft it. The single 10 rules does not apply. You increase the number of commons in the set from normal to help mitigate how often this comes up. But it can happen. It also stops you. Okay, so this is the first card. Four double black legendary creature vampire noble. Flying whenever another creature dies. Put two plus one plus one counters on the card. Whenever another player loses a game, you gain life equal to that player's life total at, as the turn began 
partner. So he does get bigger. We've seen that effect from vampires before. Flying. When another creature dies, put plus one, plus one counters on Sink the Dark Baron. Whenever another player loses a game, you gain life equal to the player's life total. At Yeah, so it makes sense. I mean, essentially, it's kind of like the um, Sanguine Blood. You're trying to infinite them out. Here we have Uncommons. We have the Hanlot. These names are getting like more and more weird like every set. Halan Kesk Ranger. And then we have Alina Kesk Trapper. Uh, pretty interesting. A lot of partner cards. We have Prismatic Piper 5. If it is your commander, choose a color before the game begins. Prismatic Piper is the chosen color. Partner. Oh, that's interesting. So you can basically, um, oh, that's very interesting. You can basically make your own color, color combinations. Keeper of the Accord, free and a white at the beginning of each opponent's end step. If that player controls more creatures than you, create a 1-1 one, one soldier creature. At the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more land than you, uh, you may search your library for basic planes and then put it. So it's a pretty interesting card. I mean, this set is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not saying that VIP booster packs are bad or the collector's editions are bad. I'm just saying, like, per money, I would much rather draft a set, have Battle Bond-esque value, and that's that sounds much better to me than opening a bunch of VIP packs. Um, to be quite frank, VIP packs are just not um, a fantastic deal, right? Uh, when you talk about like $100 or $125 a VIP pack or an entire box that you can draft with your friends of this product, I, I pick this product every time. And this product won't be as bad. I mean, it has five land. It has the Battle Bond land, which I do checked right now. The Battle Bond land are anywhere between 10 to $20. That's a lot of money. Plus, like, Commander Spirit. That used to be a lot of money. And then Command... You're still going to get lots and lots of really great EDH cards out of it as well. Like, utility cards. So, you'll get a lot of use from these cards. And it won't just be like, oh, how much can I resell it for? No, you'll actually be able to use these. Overall, I mean, I feel like this is a really, really great set. And I do feel that... Um, Hey, why not? I mean, it's, uh, it's it looks great. Um, I think it is great. And like the foiling and the special frame. And this makes sense for EDH. Does it make sense for Corset to have collector's edition? Cor no, it never made any sense to me. Because it's like, what in Corset are you trying to collect? There's maybe four or five cards in Corset that you would want to collect. Here... There would be more of them, and they do more things, and you can put them in your ED8 stack, right? I do like the frames. The foiling is very interesting. The foiling is quite intriguing that they're coming up with new different foils because maybe one of them is, like, the best looking, and that one will be the most expensive. The set has a hundred possible legends you can open. The most legends of any set in history, including the set called Legends. <laughs> 32 popular legendary creatures not otherwise in Commander Legends and put them into this frame. The frame looks good. I, I think it looks good. I think everything looks good. Um, I don't know what the price is. There, there's a lot of new product coming out. Uh, remember, we also have Battle for Zendikar. So we have this product, we have Battle for Zendikar, we'll probably will pick up a few more Secret Layers. I know Secret Layer Dogs came out recently. And we'll probably have uh, a, oh obviously we have, what's it called, Battle for Zendikar? No, Zendikar Rising. And then we have the Commander Green, which I would save money for that. Whatever the price is for that, unless it's like insane, uh, like Secret Layer pricing, 
The Commander version green is very good. It has Sylvan Library, it has Woolly Tutor, Soul Ring, Commander Tower, Ocus, Locus of Mana, uh, Seaborn Muse. Like it has a ton of value in it. And I would say, unless the MSRP is something like ridiculously high, get the foil one. So back to my end conclusion. Uh, the end conclusion should be pretty simple. I mean, it's not like a genius. I don't need to be a genius to tell you this. This is a good value. Uh, this is a very good value for the current price that it is sitting on Amazon at. So assuming the Amazon price is 125 and assuming you can get this a little cheaper, yes, there's less booster packs, but my goodness, this is a very good set. And the reason that it's so good is because of these five land. These five land, it's, they're, they're tested, right? The market has already said that the Morphic Pool is 20 bucks still. And the, what's gonna call it? The lowest one, I think the green white one is about 10 bucks. So worst, worst case scenario, you get a $10 card. Best case scenario, you get a $20 card. Now, of course, those cards can flip in price depending on what decks become more and more popular. But these are very, very good ADH cards. Um, are they as great as dual lands? No, but they're pretty close. They're as close as I think you can get. So, Conjure Tarkir, same type of deal. If you only have five good land in the set, that's enough. I mean, I don't need anything else. I don't need to see anything else. Five good land is enough. Hi, guys.